Hi, this is the chapter 10 review for photosynthesis. We're going to be focusing on just the light dependent and independent reactions. Okay, so real quickly, photosynthesis, remember, means synthesis from light. That's what the word actually means, photosynthesis. And the way it works are plants take in light and they take in carbon dioxide. They also take in water, okay, and obviously plants need sunlight and water, but they also breathe in carbon dioxide. So they start with these things like carbon dioxide and water, and they make carbon di or carbohydrates, they make sugars. They also make water and oxygen as byproducts. Okay, so when we say photosynthesis, they're making something from light, and what they're making is sugar. Okay, that sugar can then be used as a subsequent source of energy. These processes we're going to talk about, the light reactions and dark reactions, or light independent reactions, they occur inside the plant cell. So here's our plant cell. Here's a chloroplast inside of the plant cell, and if we zoom in, we have different compartments. The light reactions take place in the thylakoid membrane, right on this plasma membrane here of the thylakoid, where the chlorophyll is. And it produces ATP and NADPH. Okay, so we're at the thylakoid membrane. The light independent reactions take place in the liquid portion of the chloroplast called the stroma. And it's called light independent, but they require the products of the light reaction. The end result of the light independent reactions is the production, ultimate production of sugars. So let's look at these a little more closely. Um, the first series of reactions we'll look at are part of the light dependent reactions. They require light. And this is there's two forms, non-cyclic electron transport and cyclic electron transport. Let's start with non-cyclic. Okay, so here's a diagram showing non-cyclic electron transport. It produces, the end products are NADPH and ATP. Those are the main products that we're trying to create, NADPH and ATP. The byproduct or waste product is oxygen. It has three steps, photosystem two, electron transport chain and photosystem one. So we look on the left, here's a photosystem, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, then we travel from there to the electron transport chain, and then we travel to photosystem one, and then finally to an enzyme called NADP reductase. So the next series of slides, we're gonna walk through each of these steps in more detail. So we'll start with photosystem two. Okay, this is where we started on the left of the previous diagram. If we look at it, we have what's called a photosystem this consists of multiple um, antennae, or these chlorophyll pigments, that collect light. So what happens is a photon of light comes in. That energy is kind of funneled towards what's called a reaction center, this chlorophyll in the center. And it becomes excited. That energy is absorbed by the molecule, and an electron in there moves to an outer energy level, and it's released. Okay, So that electron is going to be released from the chlorophyll, and it's going to travel from the photosystem 2 through the electron transport chain. Okay, so this chlorophyll loses an electron. Remember, oxidation is lost, so this chlorophyll is being oxidized. Now, in order for this to keep happening, this chlorophyll has to gain back another electron, and it does that by water. So if you look at the diagram, the water actually loses an electron, okay, and becomes oxygen. So the water loses an electron, so it's oxidized. becomes um, Water becomes oxygen. And that electron then goes to the chlorophyll, so this whole process can then repeat. Okay, so if we look at photosystem two, this is a starting point of non-cyclic electron transport. We need sunlight energy that comes in. We need this reaction center chlorophyll that gets excited, loses an electron that then goes on to the next step, the electron transport chain. We also require water to replenish this photosystem with an electron. Water is oxidized, it loses an electron. The chlorophyll is reduced, it gains an electron. Let's look at this next step, the electron transport chain. All right, so here's the electron transport chain. Uh, it connects photosystem two to photosystem one. The electron's gonna flow through it and we're gonna generate ATP. Okay, let's, let's zoom in on this electron transport chain. So here's the electron transport chain. It should look familiar from the previous chapter. And what happens is this electron from photosystem two that we talked about is gonna flow through a series of membrane proteins, okay? in this electron transport chain. As it flows through, okay, hydrogen ion is pumped out, and we create a gradient of hydrogen ions outside the cell. 
Okay, this is called chemiosmosis, if you remember. These hydrogen ions or these protons are then going to flow back in through the ATP synthase, and as they do, we're going to generate ATP. So this is one of the important end products of the non-cyclic electron transport, ATP. This ATP is going to be used to create sugars later in the light-independent reactions. All right, the non-cyclic electron transport isn't over yet. Okay, that electron that was just flowing through the electron transport chain is going to continue on, if you see it right here, and it's going to end up at photosystem one. And it ends up at the reaction center, so it ends up at this chlorophyll. What it does is it replenishes this chlorophyll with an electron. Sunlight comes in, this, it gets funneled to the reaction center, all the energy. This chlorophyll gets excited, it loses an electron that then is passed on through a series of components until it gets to NADP plus reductase. This name tells you what it does. It's an enzyme. It ends in ASE. We know it's an enzyme. It takes NAD plus and reduces it to NADPH. Okay. It reduces it, so it's gaining electrons. NADPH is an important end product of non-cyclic electron transport. Okay. So this is photosystem one. So, so far we've created NADPH right here, and we also created ATP in the previous slide. These are both going to be used to create Sugar, NADPH is a source of electrons to make a sugar. Okay, how did we make NADPH? This electron is flown through, or travels through this system, okay, gets the NADP plus reductase, and NAD plus accepts it and becomes NADPH. It's going to carry electrons to help us make a sugar. So when we're making a sugar, we need a source of electrons. When we broke down glucose, in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, we released electrons. Now we're making a sugar and we're gonna to have to, have to supply a source of electrons. So this is the overall process of non-cyclic electron transport. We have photosystem two, which starts with light. Okay, sunlight comes in, the chlorophyll gets excited, it loses an electron, okay? This chlorophyll is replaced with an electron by water. Water gives an electron, okay, and it becomes oxygen. This oxygen is the byproduct, the waste product. This electron from photosystem two then travels through the electron transport chain. Here we create ATP, but this ATP is used to make sugars in the next, um, in the light independent reactions. Now watch this electron. Where does it go? It ends up at photosystem one. Sunlight comes in, a photon of energy comes in. This chlorophyll gets excited, loses an electron. That flows th through NADP plus reductase right here and creates NADPH. So the big things we want to keep track of at the end of uh, this light, in the, or light dependent reaction is we've made ATP in the electron transport chain and we've made NADPH. These are the two things we need to make sugars. We need both of these. And these will go on to the light independent reactions we'll see in a minute. Now there's one other type of um, electron transport in the light reactions and it's called cyclic electron transport. And if, here's the diagram of cyclic electron transport. If you look at it, we start with photosystem one, sunlight comes in, it gets channeled to the reaction center, the chlorophyll gets excited and loses an electron, okay? That electron is going to, sorry, the electron's going to actually be lost. It's going to flow through the electron transport chain. So we're at reaction center one, sunlight comes in, lose electron, okay? That flows through an electron transport chain. As it does, we generate ATP, as we do in electron transport. Now this electron ends back at photosystem one. So it's cyclic. We left photosystem one with that electron. It goes through only the electron transport, so we only create ATP. Then that electron flows back to photosystem one, so it's cyclic. Now the other thing is, this is just, the only product we're making here is ATP. There's no NADPH, so this is just additional ATP. And it turns out in order to make sugar, we need lots and lots of ATP. So in the non-cyclic, we made ATP and NADPH. And in the cyclic, we just make additional ATP to help us make sugars later. Okay. So here's the two side by side. The top's the cyclic, and at the bottom is the non-cyclic. And it's very easy here to see that the non-cyclic at the top, it flows in a straight manner. Okay, it goes from photosystem two, electron transport, to photosystem one. Okay, during the electron transport chain in the center, we create some ATP, okay? And then the electron carries on, and then at the end we make an ADPH. 
These are used to make sugars later. The cyclic, actually, the electron leaves the chlorophyll after it gets excited from the photons, travels through the electron transport chain, makes some ATP, and then ends back up at the same photosystem. So we've only created ATP here. Okay, and that's an additional source of ATP for our sugar production. Okay, so we've created ATP. So now, so far, we have ATP and we have NADPH. Let's use those to make sugars in the light reactions, light independent reactions. All right, so the next series of reactions we'll look at are called the light independent reactions. And this is what we call the Calvin cycle, okay, or Calvin Benson cycle or Calvin cycle. So here's our chloroplast where we're at. We did the light um, reactions first. This was in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast, inside the chloroplast. The end products of the light reactions were one, were ATP, and the second was NADPH. Okay. Now the second set of reactions are light independent reactions, which includes the Calvin cycle. It's going to start with CO2. Okay, we need carbon dioxide, and we're going to use that carbon dioxide to make sugars. Okay, in order to take CO2 and ultimately make sugars, we need a few things. We need ATP, which is energy, and we need NADPH, which is a source of electrons. So we get those ATP and NADPH from the light reactions. They're used to drive the light independent reactions, the Calvin cycle. So even though it's called light independent, it still requires the products of the light reaction. So this slide is just summarizing that we don't use the sunlight directly for the light independent reactions, but we require ATP and NADPH from the light dependent reactions. So the Calvin cycle is going to occur in three phases. The first phase is called carbon fixation. Okay, so what happens, this is the Calvin cycle. CO2 enters, this is the starting product, okay, and it joins up with RUBP, and an enzyme joins CO2 into the carbon cycle, and that's called um, carbon fixation. So CO2 fixation is when carbon dioxide joins the Calvin cycle. It's fixed. So CO2 is in the atmosphere and it joins the Calvin cycle and becomes usable by the plant. So we're saying the plant has fixed it into a form that it can use and that's carried out by an enzyme called Rubisco. Okay, the very important enzyme that's used for carbon fixation. Okay, that is the first step, taking CO2 out of the atmosphere and entering it into the carbon cycle or Calvin cycle, it's eventually going to be used to make sugars in this comp in this, through this process. The second step then of the Calvin cycle is where we take the intermediates that we've used, we've joined carbon dioxide already, and we start to make the products that are going to become sugar. So this is kind of the conversion of uh, the carbon dioxide into ultimately into the sugars that we're going to make inside the plant. The key here is it's going to require lots of ATP. It requires 12 ATPs. It also requires 12 NADPHs. So the ATPs energy, NADPHs are sources of electrons, and we're making a sugar. The third phase of the Calvin cycle is to regenerate the cycle itself. Okay, so at the end of that last phase, we've made an end product that's important here, G3P. We didn't make a sugar exactly, but this G3P will go on to make the sugars. But in order to regenerate this cycle so we can take more CO2 and use it to make more sugars, we need to keep the cycle going. It requires six more ATPs. Okay, so six additional ATPs regenerate this cycle so a new CO2 can come in, join up with RUBP, and the process starts over again. So if we look, the important end product here is what we call G3P glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and if you follow the Calvin cycle down the bottom G3P goes on to make our sugars but also goes on to make lots of other important compounds inside the plant cell. So what happens to this G3P? One thing is that it can go from the chloroplast into the cytoplasm and used to make glucose and that glucose can then enter glycolysis in the mitochondria. So here's a plant cell. Okay, Plant cells have chloroplasts Here's a chloroplast, but they also have mitochondria. So the idea here is inside the chloroplast, we have the photosynthesis. We have the light reactions, which make NA ATP, and they make NADPH. These are the light reaction products. 
they're used by the Calvin cycle okay, to take CO2 and convert it into sugar. So that's what's done in photosynthesis. Now, once we have sugar, it can travel to the mitochondria. Well, first the cytoplasm and glycolysis occurs, and then the pyruvate and acetyl-CoA, they go to the mitochondria, and we have the Krebs cycle, and we have the electron transport chain that occur. So plants have both chloroplasts and mitochondria. So the chloroplasts are a source of making sugars, okay, or the precursors to make the sugars. And then that sugar, the energy from the sugar can be extracted through the processes we talked about of cellular respiration, which include um, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain inside the mitochondria. So that's what happens to the G3P, but th that's not the only thing that can happen. So here's the Calvin cycle. Okay, so CO2 enters the Calvin cycle, and then it goes through all these intermediates. Okay, if we follow the Calvin cycle, here's the G3P that's really important. The G3P breaks off and can be used to create polysaccharides. Okay, if we follow this again, we can use it to create lipids. Okay, and ultimately, if we follow it through a lot, several more metabolic pathways, we can ultimately make proteins. So plants need carbohydrates, they need lipids, they need proteins. And one of the ultimate sources of these for plants uh, is carbon dioxide. It enters the Calvin cycle, then it can travel through the other pathways and end up making lipids, um, polysaccharides like starch, a storage component, proteins. But the Calvin cycle also makes DNA. Okay, so intermediates from the Calvin cycle will be used to drive the production of nucleic acids. So ultimately, all of the macromolecules the plant needs it gets from carbon dioxide. And if you remember, we said plants are, um, we call plants autotrophs, they're self-feeders. So they use the energy from sunlight to make sugar, okay, and that sugar then can be used to make other products inside of the cell. So they use energy, CO2, and they make all the other products they need. Right? And that's the basic overview of um, the light-dependent and light-independent reactions.